It's your guy, Joan Sosa, a.k.a. Mr. Organic, Super Conscious. We late, but hey, we're still trying to produce something for this day. You know what it is, man. We try to be as consistent as possible. We got our 600 reps done earlier while chilling. We was like, you know what? We already here. It's in the back of our mind. Let's get this done, man. You know, we woke up. We slept in. We woke up. We cleaned up. First thing we did, though, was we made our bed. You know what I'm saying? We got the first, the first minor thing, the first little accomplishment done. And then we just continue to pile on more accomplishments throughout our day so that we can have something to feel good about. Reasons to feel good, right? You know what I'm saying? Cause that's all. That's all it is, man. That's all that's ever gonna. That's ever. That's all that's ever going to satisfy us. That's all that's ever going to fulfill us. Good reasons. If we don't have any good reasons for living, <laughs> most just cut the cord loose, and you know, that's all she wrote. You know what I'm saying? They cut the story short because they lack the reasons. To keep living. They lack the reasons to do the things that they say they want to do or the things that they want. You know what I'm saying? So because they lack the reasons, they never take the actions. Psalms or Proverbs 327 says, do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to act. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to act. Do not say to someone Come back later when you have to give now. Don't be that person. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it. Who deserve good? Me personally, I believe that the children. The children deserve all the good that we have. And the elderly deserve all the good that we have left. You get what I'm saying? The youth comes first before anything. That's how I believe. Obviously, you, you the individual, come before all. But be, after that comes the children. And if it means putting your life on the line to save those children, you best be ready to do it. You best, you best ask. You best be in alignment with the universe to recognize the peace to accept the things that you cannot change, the courage to change the things that you can, and the wisdom so that you can act with reason. So that at the end, your life may have meaning because you put reasons behind it. Put a little something forth. I think it was yesterday or, you know, yeah, yesterday. Today's a new day. It's the 29th. But I put forth, encourage those around you, all right? The world is already, uh, you know, the world and its pessimistic army are already on their way to discourage and doubt at all hours. The, pes the, 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 the army of pessimism and discouragement is, al is always hard at work telling you what you can't do, what you shouldn't do, why you shouldn't do it. How you're odd, how you're weird, how you're awkward. You get what I'm saying? So the best thing that we as individuals that are a little bit more conscious of ourselves can do and what we should do, what we must do, what we have to do, what we need to do is to be that positive, that believing, that uplifting voice of reason, of optimism in, in the midst of of all the pessimism and the negativity and the disbelief and the hopelessness that the world is already filled with. Because, you know, we can do better. We should do better. And if we do the work, we should deserve the reward of that work. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, we're not always going to get what we expect oftentimes you know a storm may come by and wash away the field man that we just worked so hard 
in the spring to to plow and to sow next thing you know we have nothing to reap and harvest but does that mean that we shouldn't plant again next year that we shouldn't plan for next year for a next opportunity you know the answer is pretty simple when you were a child going through the through the crawling to walking stages did you ever stop trying to walk no and now today you can run you can jump you get what i'm saying so we should never stop we should never give up it is never too late life is forgiving time is forgiving god is forgiving so we must learn to forgive ourselves and move on and get better you know what i'm saying we should always have the intention of getting better and of never repeating the mistakes that we make even if they even if we do repeat them our intention should always be that we're never going to let this happen again so that eventually it never happens again for us men you know in this modern day construct that we live in today many of us you know to put it bluntly many of us grew up on pornography and many of us deal with the with with the challenges of relinquishing that detrimental practice that detrimental conduct you know that is detrimental not only to our biology meaning you know our our reproductive organs our met our mind but it's also destructive and degenerative to our soul to our spirit to our consciousness to our awareness you know what i'm saying to our discipline to our self control to mastery over ourselves you know what i'm saying so so just because you know it is a challenge should we stop no the reward is just that much greater the greater the challenge the greater the possibility of the reward at the end of us overcoming those challenges i'm still you know working on that it took me 15 years to stop smoking weed i started at 16 i started watching porn when i was freaking 11 or 12 years old that's a 20 year old habit weed was only 15 Pornography is 20. For some people, it's a 30, it's a 40-year-old habit. For you that have just started, it might be a year or two. Yo, we implore you. Regain control over yourself. That is not real sex. That is not real love making. That would only cause you to waste yourself away. As a matter of fact, you could go longer without ejaculation than with ejaculation just to put it simply. All right, so, you know, believe in the possibility that you can change, that you can do better, that you can get better, that you should get better, that you have to get better, that you must get better. In order to have to feel to be better. to create better to radiate greater powerful positive energy prana life <laughs> you know though me personally you know though i enjoy the things that I make myself do I don't often feel like doing them. And what do I mean I enjoy? I don't want to work out. But in the process of working out the feelings that I get 
the thoughts that go through my mind, how appreciative I feel of myself for doing the benches, the squats, the deadlifts, the leg press, the push-ups, the pull-ups, getting in the ring and sparring, even though I, you know, I, I have the the anxious nerve, the coward, not wanting to do the lazy one, the slothfulness, not wanting to do that, not wanting to ride in the win in, in, in the winter weather in ten degrees and twenty degrees, you know, five, ten miles a day just to get two or three or four hours of training, even though I don't want to do those things. Once I am in the process of, of the suck, I do my best to enjoy it. You know, I do my best to express gratitude, like heartfelt gratitude to the most high, you know, to time, to life, to that which we call God. For the capacity to experience the little bit of suffering, the little bit of satisfaction, and the joy that I can get from the suck that I am able to overcome, and that I have the luxury of being able to experience. Because anything that we are able to experience in this life is a luxury, it is a fortune. Because once you're dead, you no longer have that luxury and fortune. That's it. You know, that's all she writes. And that's the difference between motivation and discipline. You know, some people wait to feel motivated to do something. Other people do it because it is a necessity because it is a must now I'm not going to say that I'm the most disciplined shit I'm not even functioning at 100% of my capacity conversing with my higher self the other day you know I functioned at 100 before many times but at this moment I'm not I've been unable to consistently get to the gym early in the morning. And so I've been leaving it for the evening. Even though I've been consistent with my evening training, I have been inconsistent with my morning trainings. Because excuses. That's really it. Excuses. Um, I embrace the suck when I want to, not when I need to. Now, to some, they'd be like, oh, Sosa, you sound like a hypocrite. Um, if I wasn't doing anything, then I would be a hypocrite. But I am doing something. Just because I don't go in the morning, even though I know that I should, I still go in the evening, even though I still don't feel like doing it. Because I have, a, I have standards that I have to hold myself to, you know? When I had a vehicle, I was going every day in the morning. That's what I said. I was I was functioning at a hundred. <laughs> had I, <laughs> were I able to surmount the intestinal fortitude to consistently make myself go in the evening, I wouldn't even be functioning at a hundred. I would be functioning at like one ten, one twenty. Right now, I'm functioning like seventy or eighty. Right. And I can feel good about it, but at the same time, I'm not satisfied with it. So I do other things too, right? I make sure that I make it to train my nieces and nephew at least four times a week. You know what I'm saying? For an hour a day each. I make sure that I get on and I make these live videos, right? That I share some 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 form of, of wisdom, of knowledge, of encouragement, of understanding, of support to somebody somewhere that may need to hear this message or maybe even me a few years from now when I go back and I look at some of these videos, 
and I sit back and I listen to myself, how I what 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 I was thinking, what was thirty one year old Sosa thinking on this date, on January twenty eighth or twenty ninth, at one in the morning, right? So there's a difference between motivation and discipline. You know, most people want want they wait to feel like it so they feel motivated. Other people. They do the work that needs to get done regardless of how they feel. And that is the difference. The difference is that, you know, discipline is you making yourself do what you need to do regardless of how you feel at the moment. And different aspects of you will demand different levels of discipline. And, you know, thankfully, I no longer have to fight myself as it relates to, you know, habits as smoking weed which was one of my what I felt was the most limiting habit of mine detrimental habit because I you know I just it made me feel as though I didn't have the the power to to just really control myself and I'm proud of myself because you know today's the 29th two more days in like less than five days It'll be a year since I literally just stopped. You know, I was able to surmount the clarity, the purpose, the willpower to to just stop, to be like, yo, God, like, you know what I'm saying? I've submitted to the military. I've submitted to fights, but, you know, I've never really submitted to your service to stop smoking, to stop doing this because I want to be of greater value of greater service to you, almighty all. You know what I'm saying? And whatever it is that is required of me in this life. And since that day, I just, you know, I haven't smoked. And I've conversed with that awareness that if I ever do smoke, it's because the ritualistic practices that I have already established, you know what I'm saying, for certain for certain things specifically related to fighting, which is one of the practices that I've adapted over the last five years. Now, do I, do I like it? No. I enjoy practicing it. Do I always feel like it? No, but it's natural to me. I find myself shadow boxing. I find myself, you know, I love teaching it. To children, to the elderly. I love re uh, talking about it and, you know, for bringing out the philosophical and spiritual and psychological and emotional and mental values that that warrior consciousness, that warrior spirit breathes forth within individuals when they begin to practice it with honor with courage, with commitment, with humility, with love, with with the desire for self-improvement. Yo, listen, oh man, listen, martial arts is a beautiful practice, man. Especially, especially Muay Thai. I don't know, something about Muay Thai, man. And, and, and it's because, you know, it is a practice that was developed for the purpose of war, like, it is it's not like karate you know what i'm saying it's not like boxing where you're just using your hands which which is an actual sport but muay thai is an actual practice of war like you know it's you're using your hands you're using your elbows you're using your knees you're using your shins you're using your feet you're using the heel of your foot the ball of your foot you're throwing people you're it's just a beautiful practice um, and you can just really get lost in, in evolving and in, in self-improvement and you can even you know practice it as like a Tai Chi you know you can go into it nice and slow and man listen I love the art I love that art but yeah man listen as Proverbs 327 said do not withhold good from those who deserve it. If you have something good to give, man, do not withhold it from anybody, man. 
The wicked will flee when no one pursue, but the righteous are bold as a lion. That's Proverbs 28, 1. The wicked will flee when nobody even pursues them, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Listen to this. A poor man who oppresses the poor is like a driving rain which leaves no food. Those who forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. Evil men do not understand justice, but those who seek the Lord understand all. Better is the poor who walks in his integrity than one perverse in his ways, though he be rich. Whoever keeps the law is a discerning son, but a companion of gluttons shames his father. When the wicked arise, men hide themselves, but when they perish, righteous increases. Do your best, nothing more, nothing less. As a man, as a man, you are born a male, but you must become a man. And you do not become a man by doing simply what you feel like doing, nor what you want to do. One becomes a man by doing what he needs to do, what he has to do, what he should do, what he must do, what is required of him, so that he can mold himself in body, mind, and soul into something that he himself highly regards and respects. Let others praise you and not your own lips. Let other men speak well of you and not yourself. Humble yourself before all. Be a servant. Become a servant of the Most High. Don't ask of anything. Demand. Demand with faith, hope, and confidence. And express gratitude at every moment of time and in every day and in every way possible for the opportunity and blessed glory of being able to experience this great fortune we call life. God is you living as you. You are existence having an experience in time. You are infinite, living a finite experience through these, you know, vessels of blood, flesh, and bones. This will perish, but the consciousness that you are, the consciousness that you are able to develop in this life by walking a Christly and virtuous and right and proper life, that can remain in time for a very long time. You get me? Christ is your imagination. Christ is power. Christ is creativity. Christ is wisdom. Wisdom is true power. Love is power. Christ is the title. And you can develop, you can embody that title but you can't do that by simply just doing what you want by simply just doing what you feel like doing so in the moment if you can't get yourself to do everything that is needed required of you get as much done as possible start small a cathedral isn't built from the top down. Even if when it is drawn, it starts at the top or at the bottom, it starts with one brick. So, if you don't know where to start, start by making your bed in the morning. That's one accomplishment. That one accomplishment will lead to other things. But we'll start with that. If you don't know where else to start, start with that. 
maybe before you even leave your bed, you say, you express some gratitude for the bed, for the roof over your head. If you got heat in your house, maybe some heat, water, the electricity, the technology that you are able to use. Make your bed and give thanks. Either than that, we don't have anything else for you, gentlemen, to that. We have nothing else this evening except many, many blessings, much power to you, wherever you are in your journey. Anything is possible. With God before you, nothing can stand against you. With the power of the universe and your belief in that you are meant to overcome your obstacles and to come out the other end triumphant, shrouded in the glory and grace of the Most High, of the cosmos, of the universe. Ain't nothing too big for the universe. Your problems give it to it. Ain't no problem too big for the universe. And that's why I say, with the Most High before you, nothing can stand against you. All things are possible through the Most High. All things are made possible through your belief and that's something greater than yourself that manifested itself as you to come and fulfill this purpose as you based on your unique skills, abilities, capacities. All that is required is your mindset to be developed to that capacity, useful enough to provide value to the greatest possible number or just yourself for the greatest possible number and for opportunity to present itself. And everything else will be good. May you have a great evening, wherever you are and whatever time you find this message. An even greater five years ahead, decade, that you may produce a wonderful generation and a great legacy.